We're seeing California senators backpedal on their proposition for mandatory firearm registrations in California. That's Senate Bill 1160. Let's talk about it. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the channel today. That is right. We have seen some promising news coming out of the Capitol in regards to Senate Bill 1160. That is the bill proposing an all out firearms registration in California. To talk us through it today, we have brought back Rick Travis, who is the director of legislation for CRPA. He is also the host of Firing Line Radio. You can catch him on Saturdays at 1 p.m. on AM 590. The answer, Rick, thanks for being with us with us my pleasure absolutely but before we get into that today guys if you want to directly contribute to lawsuits against anti-second amendment laws in california and to the legislative advocacy that's going on up in sacramento advocating against uh, anti-2a laws please be sure to like share and subscribe to these videos that education towards others will arm them on their way to the ballot box in november during the general elections this year and it does help out this cause when more people see these videos so please go ahead and help us there hit that little notification bell so that you get notified as these videos come out so that you are educated as soon as they come out uh, so rick I, I guess let's just start you know, we've done a couple of videos on Senate Bill 1160 already. Uh, wrap this up in a bow neatly for me, though. What exactly is Senate Bill 1160? Why are we pushing so hard on this one? What would it mean for California? This is the annual registration of firearms bill. And what this bill will require is that every gun and every gun owner, there are no exemptions um, outside of an antique firearm. So if you own anything that wasn't purchased as an antique, you're going to have to register it. If you didn't purchase it and it was handed down, going to have to register it. If you're in law enforcement and it's not a firearm owned by your department, yep, you're going to have to register that too. Uh, anything that was transferred through family members, be it handed down through a estate, divorce, et cetera, like a gift from your parent, brother or sister, anything like that has to be registered. And when you register it, there will be an initial one-time fee that will be assessed on every firearm. That has ranged, but it seems to be around 250 bucks. And then half of that would be what was required every year as an annual tax. They call it a fee, but let's call it really, really as a tax. So potentially uh, many people could find themselves within three, four years of having paid more in taxes than the firearm originally cost. And in the case of where something was handed down, you want it at a event or something else, which are all legal means for obtaining a firearm, you would actually be paying for that firearm now that you you didn't pay for or somebody else paid for previously. Yeah. So I guess perspectively, you know, we're looking at legislation this year where they're trying to get a licensing scheme going on, uh, uh, mandatory locked storage boxes and create a roster for that. This would kind of be the icing on that cake where they're going to be able to extract money from you every single year uh, in the form of this registration, all, I guess, as they normally say, hoping to reduce crime, not really seeing how uh, that's going to happen. So uh, what exactly is the, the victory that we had in the Capitol uh, last week with this? You know, we're, we're, we're calling this a win. Obviously, uh, the, the, you know, the bill's not completely gone away yet. But what happened in the Capitol last week uh, worth mentioning? Kevin, that's a really good question, but I want to I want to touch base on part of what also is at stake is this is mandatory firearms registration that leads to mandatory confiscation. This sets up a, a billion dollar agency within the Department of Justice that would literally be required to track more firearms that DMV tracks vehicles in this state. And look at all the issues we have with DMV annually with tracking vehicles. Now imagine a DOJ that's already overworked, understaffed, underpaid, now creating this. To, this is an impossible feat that is fraught with disasters, both for the agency, but also for us, because it sets us up into what we see in so many parts of history, which has turned out very, very poorly for the people and which millions of people have died over the last couple of centuries when this kind of a, a scheme has been set into place. It has never proven to be positive. It's always been negative. 
which is part of what led to, I think what happened is uh, the author Portentino had zero support going into this first testimony and pulled the bill when we had about 50 organizations representing roughly a quarter of a million people in opposition. And so he pulled the bill. Now, a lot of people started to run around the internet and go, we won, it's done. Nope, it means exactly that. We won round one, but this fight is not over. This bill is probably gonna have some amendments made by the author trying to gain support, trying to build up that opposition um, against us, but in support of this bill. And so we look to see it. He's got till the middle of May to get it through this house and get it moved over to the, towards the Senate. And so this fight is probably going to take place late April, early May, and it's going to be um, major. So we need people to continue to work on uh, Senate Bill 1160 by using our one-click pro uh, politics program that you put out there so effectively, Kevin, and I thank you, and I'm so grateful for that and getting more and more people built into this coalition because this is the fight of fights for our rights. Well, I'm, I'm kind of curious on that. Uh, you know, what what does the, well, I guess, first of all, so very clearly put, um, we seem to have emerged victorious in round one. This is a Senate committee uh, hearing where they were supposed to hear Senate Bill 1160. Anthony Portentino, the, the author of the bill, pulled it for consideration because you're saying he had absolutely zero support. Guys, that means that Moms Demand Action wasn't there supporting it. That means Giffords wasn't there supporting it. Uh, there are plenty of nationwide organizations that blindly throw their support on bills like these and have done so many, many times in the past. They haven't even done that on this bill. And I, I know that registration has been a thing throughout this, the, the nation for a long time that's been pretty solidly rejected uh, by the people of America on so many different levels. So I guess this one so far uh, is included in that. But I, I am kind of curious, you know, and I've worked with you a lot on this, bringing the one-click politics software uh, to CRPA to really create a vehicle that makes it as easy as possible uh, for everyone. And guys, if you're watching this and, and you don't know, uh, you can go on to CRPA's website in the program section uh, and, and click on uh, legislative advocacy. You will find uh, campaigns on that landing page that you can immediately contribute towards by advocating to your legislators. All you gotta do is put in your name and address the zip code from that address allows the software to send a pre-written opposition letter to these bills directly to the legislators that represent you. Uh, and that's what kind of becomes important in this situation, because if these legislators want to get elected and they know what their people like and don't like, they're going to take that to heart when it comes to them voting or, as Rick, you've, you've mentioned in the past, maybe force them to not vote. But specifically in this instance, you know, I'm kind of looking at the back end statistics uh, with that software between Senate Bill 1160, uh, Senate Bill 1253 and Assembly Bill 262. You know, we're looking at almost 10,000 emails sent by Californians to their legislators. Uh, before last year, you know, they, they were receiving zero from, from our community. Uh, and that seems to have ramped up from zero to 100 miles an hour in, in just a year. Uh, what effects are you personally as the lobbyist seeing uh, in the Capitol as a result of that one-click politics? Uh, as a result of one-click politics, it's given us like a third part of the trident. Obviously myself and others that work with me up in the Capitol being there, that's important, but that's one piece. Having this one-click politics um, allowing us to get the masses together and working with this, this becomes another leg of pressure on those offices that make them question what they're doing or at least slow down to have conversations, which allows myself to, to be able to go in there and have those conversations pushing back. And then that coupled again with what your chapter programs are doing by going to mean legislators a staff in their local offices, as well as uh, our amazing phone team of volunteers that are phoning into those local offices. All of this applies pressure that causes um, some of the members to say, hey, maybe I just won't, won't, don't wanna support this. Maybe I won't vote on this. Maybe this just isn't worth it. And that's part of what we do um, in fighting for your rights. And so it's a very critical part I'm very grateful for what it's doing because, and it's only got room to grow. And that's, that would be my message. Like 
we need to pass this out because it makes it so easy for people. They don't have to get on a phone. They can be doing it while they're in a meeting. Just, I mean, I won't be descriptive, but they can do it from anywhere as long as they have a phone and they can put that messaging out and that is important. And so I encourage you to pass that around because this impacts literally at least 25% or more of the population of the state. Well, I got to tell you, as like an individual, it it always feels good to know that something that you are contributing to is working and is having an effect, uh, but also to your networks. Uh, that you know, there, there's a lot of uh, deterrence that have been set up in California to make people think that their voice doesn't really matter. You know, you're one person in in 39 million. Uh, and phone calls to legislators' office and emails and letters and all of these things, they don't actually have an impact. Uh, it's nice to be able to hear from somebody as yourself who is up there in the Capitol working on this, giving us proof that it does make a difference, uh, which is absolutely why we're going to continue and create these vehicles for people to advocate for uh, and and continue that going into the future. So I guess for 1160, you know, the uh, a battle has been won. Uh, the war is not over yet. What are your thoughts going into the future with 1160 and, and the legislative packages that have been uh, put together look like? Um, right now, it's the more people we can build in these coalitions. And that's why I'm saying, you know, like, if you have used one-click politics that we're talking about today, take that to your Rotary Club. Take that to your local uh, political group that you get to, your church group, your work group, everywhere and say, this is how easy it is to get involved and save your rights, and possibly those of the people around you, as well as your life. Because literally, um, if we have mandatory firearms registration, I'll go back to it. It has always led to millions of deaths. And so that's just a historical fact. Um, I heard somebody earlier make this comment, but that's not being alarmist. That's just being a learned, smart person that understands what happens when these mistakes are made. And so we're out working on that. And the more people we can get to do that and help us broaden this coalition against this heinous act, um, the better. It's just that simple. I mean, if I can just grab your opinion really quick, we have seen a lot of these nationwide organizations uh, make pitches for legislation or throw their support for this kind of legislation. Is Moms Demand Action and, and uh, Giffords and, and Bloomberg and all of these other people, are they just late to this party? Do you expect to see their support on this uh, in upcoming committee meetings, uh, or do you expect to not see it? It's, it's hard to say. There's a lot of, um, you know, talk, you know, and I don't know how much of it I buy into. You know, there's people saying, well, Portentino doesn't have the support because he didn't win his election for Congress. And so he's terming out and they're looking to put their support behind people that are going to be there in the next couple of years. Maybe. I doubt that. Seriously. Um, some people are saying, hey, they realize that this is going to cost them too much in legal battles. And by the way, we're costing those organizations a lot of money in legal battles that weren't winning. So it could be that issue. I mean, there's there's a lot of factors that I'm not going to, you know, a lot of people get up there and pontificate, oh, it's this, oh, it's that. No one really knows for sure. Um, but I do know that Portentino staff are trying to figure this out. And so it'd be interesting to see who comes in on his side. And I think it will be telling. I think that will be one of the things we'll be able to use, Kevin, as we're going to be able to point out, um, oh, so you're late to the party. Why now? Right. Well, hopefully more victories in uh, this legislative session to come. I'm sure we're going to be having you back on to talk about those in the future. But for now, I want to thank you for your time uh, and thanks for uh, sharing with us. You know, it's an honor to serve everybody here in California to try to to stop these things that take away our enumerated rights. And so it's always a pleasure. Absolutely. And thank you. And guys, if you like this kind of content and like learning what is happening up at the Capitol in real time, please, once again, you can contribute to Second Amendment le le legislation and litigation by simply liking, sharing, and subscribing to these videos. Hit that little notification bell so that you get notified when these things come out as they come out. And as always, guys, we'll see you on the next one.